Hi, I'm Laura Templeton with 30 Second Success. I help people develop their 30 second message for networking and video. Many of you know that I do a lot of public speaking and a lot of workshops, but one of the things that I've just recently been able to add to my list of accomplishments is published author. Yes, finally, I got there. And it is all due to the help from this amazing woman who was introduced to me by somebody in my network. Debbie, I am so glad that Brenda Jankowski introduced us so many months ago, and it has been an amazing adventure with you. So please introduce yourself to the folks. Thank you so much, Laura. You're right. I mean, it's amazing um, when you have someone in your network who's like, wait a second, I know exactly who you need to talk to. And so great shout out for Brenda. Um, I'm Debbie, uh, Deborah Keevan, actually of Highlander Press Books, and Laura has the distinct honor and my pleasure to have, she's my first book published under Highlander Press Books, so we did that in January, and uh, I actually help uh, entrepreneurs or those who have a book inside of them take their book from a seed through the sapling stage, all the way through the entire process of having this published book, so they too can add published author to their their uh, list of accomplishments. And so uh, we're going to talk to you today about the process that Laura went through and um, how we ended up working together to help her dream to become a published author come true. Thank you so much. You know, and you're absolutely right. Just the connections that happen along the way make everything possible. So today we're going to talk about going from paralysis to published. How often do we find ourselves in a situation where we want to write a book and we keep saying we're going to write a book and it gets kind of stuck in process. And that's where I found myself along the way. So I'm going to share my experience with you. And then we're going to talk a little bit with Debbie about um, how she helped me go from the stage of paralysis to actually finally getting published. So just wanted to share a little bit about how this all came about. Very early on in my business, when I first established my business goals, one of the things that I knew would be a part, a big part of what I wanted to accomplish was the goal of writing a book. Originally, it was uh, we had had a conversation about writing the book, 30 Second Success. Yes, it's about branding. Um, it really is what I deliver when I work with clients is helping them understand that your 30 second message really is that entry or door opener to being effective in your networking and how to create that message that attracts the right conversations so you can begin to start networking and connecting with your audience. But I also want to go a little bit deeper in, in ideas and thoughts and, and plans for, a, you know, a series of books came about because a lot of people need to network, but they need to, they network differently. So, you know, having that one general book and then taking it into, you know, a series of books where it's a 30 second success for professional, 30 second success for the college student, 30 second success for the realtor, the entrepreneur, the network marketer. Eventually, there will be a series of books. I have to start somewhere. So just taking the time to really kind of play with the idea and sharing it along the way and keeping it on my goal board was big. But along the way, I kind of, you know, started playing with the ideas. And I, you know, through working um, in, with organizations and doing speaking and public speaking, corporate workshops, I found that there was a need for something in writing, you know, having a handout. So I worked um, feverishly to get my workbook done, which was kind of writing a book, but not a full book. It was the beginning. It was the start of something. But it was a foundation, and it was a great place to start, and it was very well received. And the workbook has always been part of my workshops that I do. Attendees will come back even now and, and tell me that they, they continuously reference that workbook. And a lot of what you find in my published book was really started with this workbook. It was the foundation. Over time, I found that I started writing more and more bits and pieces, you know, they're sharing those ideas and recording them in different places. One of my favorite places now to use for recording ideas is Otter. Um, Otter is a great transcription service that um, really 
encapsulates uh, that artificial intelligence where it, it does a great job of translating voice to text. And I found that my, I was filling up my phone with all of these great um, snippets of information. And so I started pulling all of those components, all those pieces and ideas together, but I wasn't quite ready to write my book. So I played with the idea of writing some courses, you know, so design, developing a course for my website. Again, it was, you know, taking my writing, creating a script, bringing all my notes together and, you know, just getting the ideas out there and helping people in a different format. Again, two years into being in business, I had all these great ideas and great notes, but I wasn't quite comfortable yet with saying, okay, let's, let's put this into book format. So it, again, bringing all that information together in one place really kind of helped me to create this, this course that I was developing. But through the process of that, not only did I realize that I had enough material to write one course, I wound up with three courses. There, I didn't realize how much material over time that I had been culminating and, and pulling together and the stories that, you know, that I was able to use and share and really fit into there. But again, I think I was still holding back and not quite ready to jump into the arena of publishing a book and found myself, you know, just kind of I started to play with the idea like, oh, wait. Now there's enough information here. Maybe I do have enough for a book. So I started to really think about all the parts and pieces that I had, had gathered together and finally started to say, you know what, it's time to come up with this, with this manuscript and, and figure out the best way for me to approach the actual writing of the book. So you know, once I launched those, those courses and really started getting feedback and realized that there was good content that people needed more access to, the logical step really was taking all of that, taking all of that information and figuring out where to start, how it all fit together, the parts and pieces. I literally took my scripts and all of my notes, printed everything out, cut it up with scissors and laid it out on my floor trying to figure out what went with what, what the, you know, the, the, the transition from one section of the book to the next section of the book and what worked and what didn't work and where stories needed to be. And it was a process and, and, but it was fun. It was a fun process for me to physically see everything in print. And I, and I say that because until you actually print it out and see it in print, you don't, sometimes you don't realize you have enough. Mm -hmm. And Debbie, you know, you can attest to this. One of the things that we had that we, you helped me with very early on was the fact that, yeah, maybe on an eight and a half by 11 paper, it doesn't, you know, 60 pages doesn't look like much. But when you think of it in book format, it's almost twice that. Exactly. Yeah. Well, you know, it's interesting looking at, at this picture, which I just love that you have these pictures, is I'm reminded of, of um, do you remember those old Afghans where the, the granny squares? <laughs> and then you, ha you had all this stack of, and I'm not a crocheter, but all the stack of granny squares and you, 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 you laid them all out, but then you have to crochet them together, mm -hmm. right, to make something that is actually usable because unless you're very tiny, <laughs> like a borrower, you, you know, those little squares don't, don't mean anything, but here you, you actually can see all the bits and pieces and how they would potentially go together. Right. And, and, you know, I love the fact that you use the granny square analogy. Um, and, and it's funny because I just, and it's so appropriate for this moment. I don't think I've ever shared this with you. Um, I literally found a bag full of granny squares that I started when my son son was young, and I literally crocheted them all together. That's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> no, until this very second, you did not share that story with me. <laughs> and 
That's pretty cool. Um, yeah. So, you know, and you're right. It's, it's the weaving of all the pieces together. You know, I took all that information, created the scripts for my courses, realized that I didn't, I had more than enough for one script. I wound up breaking it into three different courses. Um, and now bringing all of that back together to figure out how it's going to be woven for a book. Because, you know, when you're writing courses, some of the content spills over and you wind up using it in multiple places, multiple right. areas. Similar to a book, sometimes you reference back and forth or you might want to repeat something to make a really strong point somewhere else in the book. So that was a lot of the conversation that I had in my head at that point because I still hadn't met Debbie. And, you know, those conversations started to overflow and, you know, one thing leads to another. And I started really telling people and sharing with people that I was writing a book, I'm writing a book, I'm writing a book. And I started really hearing myself saying, I'm writing a book, I'm writing a book. And I think I was convincing myself that I'm writing a book. And especially once I got to this point where I realized, yes, I do have enough content and it can become a book. And how is it all going to be pieced together? And the thought process, like I literally had to think about my table of contents, like what, what leads to what, um, but it still needed to be refined. And I was, I think I was stuck in that process of asking these kind of questions that a lot of people find themselves stuck in, you know, would anybody buy my book? Uh, would people judge me? What if no one liked it? You know, that was, those were really big questions for me. And I think sometimes that we allow that fear to hold us back because, it, you know, it's the fear of the unknown. Um, and again, it's like, okay, well, other people have written similar books. Why would someone buy my book as opposed to someone else's book? And there was a lot of that self-doubt that came along. Um, but I also realized over the course of time, um, as I was sharing with people that I'm writing a book, it got easier. It, it really did get easier because a lot of people would start asking me, how's your book coming along? I can't wait to read it. Um, let me know if there's anything you need, if you need some feedback or if you want someone to want to look it over and just give you, give you some input. You know, a lot of people were really encouraging through that time. And I found that the more I told people that I was writing the book, the more encouragement I got. A lot more people were like, you, what you teach is so important. I'm excited that you're writing a book because even though I've, I've been to one of your workshops, I would love to have, you know, that outlined in a book. So it, it was confirmation for me that this was something that was needed. A lot of people were looking for it. And it was, even though it was kind of stuck inside of me, and Debbie, I know this is something that you talk about a lot, is that, you know, that it, we were, we were designed for a purpose. And if, this idea of a book is so prevalent in all the work that I'm doing, it needs to come out. And, and if we could just pause right here, because what you shared in the previous slide was, you know, those questions that came up for you. And, you know, I always say that that's like your fraud flag, flag flying high, right? And, and everyone has those feelings regardless of if you're Stephen King and you're writing the next book or this is your first book or you don't feel like you're a writer or you feel like there's nothing that you can add to the conversation and and what you just shared Laura is so crucial for people to understand is that yes there are very few novel ideas in the world and yes things have been said before and yes there are other people saying similar things and yes you may not be a writer naturally but all of those things are just your fear showing up stopping you from actually sharing what you're meant here to share and the the thing is is every person has a different set of experiences every person has a different point of view every person has a story and their story matters. And regardless of whether it's shared in a book similar to yours, Laura, where it's really geared for an entrepreneur, or it's a memoir, or it's even a novelized version of something, those stories are meant to be shared. And until they're written down, they can't really be shared. They can be shared in other medium, of course. You can write a script. They can become a movie. You can, you can speak it. Um, but really, there's something very cathartic and healing and clarifying about actually writing it down. Absolutely, absolutely, and, and I think there, it, you're, the healing piece is really important. 
It, it, it really it has, is. Yeah, it really is. And there's that sense of accomplishment mm -hmm. that comes with that. So, and, and, you know, for me, I had gotten to this point where it got to be easier. And I was like, I finally realized that it was time for a shift in my mind. I needed to go from saying that I'm writing a book to actually getting it done. Getting it done. I was tired of hearing myself say over and over, I'm writing a book, I'm writing a book, I'm writing a book. And, and I had had a couple people look at it, give me, gave me feedback. I, but I just, I just, there was a confidence that there was something that I needed help with. There was just some, it wasn't totally clicking for me. And I had explored the self publishing route, which was something else that I was struggling with. It was like, oh my gosh, it's going to take so much time. This is not my forte. I just needed someone to help me. And that was when I um, reached out to my really good friend, Brenda Jankowski, who is also, she's my photographer. She's done amazing work uh, for me for years with my brand images. As a matter of fact, I've used the brand images that she created for me quite a while ago for my cover. And yeah. um, she's, she's actually worked with Debbie as well. Yep, she's and, my photographer. <laughs> yeah, right. So um, when I was sharing with Brenda that I was just so tired of hearing myself, so we wanted to publish a book and I just needed the right person to help me. She instantly, because she had spent time with both me mm -hmm. and with Debbie, that she instantly knew who the right person was for me to work with. Uh, and she knows a number of other publishers as well. And I was looking at that point in time, I was looking for an editor. I was looking for someone to help me with self publishing. So she connected Debbie and I. And um, through that conversation, I just became so much more comfortable, so much more at ease with going from the whole point of, okay, I've written this book. I need somebody to look at it and tell me, it was one of those things, what's wrong with it? How do I fix it? And how do I get it published, right? Yep. So it's the whole idea of, I've written a book, now what? And with that, I am actually going to let Debbie share her brilliance about the process that she took me through. And there's a, you know, the question she was able to answer for me throughout the whole process and how we got from I'm writing a book to actually being published. Yeah, thank you so much. Yeah. So I love this because Laura, as I recall, our very first conversation was, I've got a book. It might need some polish editing, um, but I'm fairly confident that we're ready to go. And you had a cover that you weren't in love with. And we really spent some time working on that. And I looked at, I went through your book and I think ultimately we had about five revisions, right? So it was like, Yes, your book was well done, but there were things that, that to change the flow and to, to build it out a little bit or to clarify certain areas and make sure that it was truly in alignment. And I love that whole process. So here's a, here's a truth that most people don't understand. And it's, um, it's something that I feel is really important. And, and I love this image because it really identifies the whole process. And had I, I think help for me, it's always helpful to see the whole roadmap. And so writing a book is step one of a five step process, right? And, but there's many layers within actually each of these processes. So writing the book is there's the first draft, which mo many, not most many um, people who write and self publish, they actually d do themselves a disservice because they don't, take the time to get professional editing. And what is the difference between, you know, mom or a cousin or a really good friend editing your book is that a professional editor uses tools that are not necessarily used by friends and family when they're editing a book. First of all, they're looking at publishing standards. They're looking at um, actually um, like the Chicago style manual or the AP style guide, depending upon how you want to publish. Um, they're looking at all of these things to really help you and they're reading the book with fresh eyes so I, Like before Laura and I met I didn't know what she was trying to accomplish And I wanted it to be very clear just by reading her book who it was for 
what the outcomes were going to be, what her big, her big promise was, and then making sure that that book fulfilled that promise. And so that's just the writing piece. Then you get to the editing piece. And the editing piece is, um, I always liken it to, you think about your first draft as a big hunk of marble. So if we're going to use the, my favorite Michelangelo um, analogy, is your, your first draft is, is the, the marble. And then when you're editing, you're actually chipping away at the marble and creating the art. So you're moving pieces around, you're taking words away, you're adding new imagery, you're getting clear about the beauty that's within this document. And so editing is, is it's so much more than are there commas in the right place? It, are the, it, am I using the right punctuation? Is this the right word? It's so much more than that because it's, it's, this, it's, the, it's the holistic view of your book as well as the nitty gritty details. And during this process, of course, then there's the cover. It's designing the cover. It's, it's, you know, that's leading into this publishing piece, which, you know, most people think, okay, I've got a, a, a book, I've got the cover, I just want to push publish, which is literally the, you push a button that says publish now. But before you push that button, there's so much more that goes into it. There's the, what category do I want to publish my book in? And you can get, um, if you're self-publishing, you can do two. If you're um, publishing through a publishing house, whether um, it's a, a, one of the big publishing houses or a hybrid publisher, which is what my company is, is you, um, you have to get the right categories. And the categories actually determines where your book is going to show up in the various places. Um, then you've got to pick the right keywords that um, when people are searching on Google or in their search engine, they're typing in something that's going to bring your book up as a reference for them. And so there's all of these background pieces. What is the pricing? Who else is, um, what is the competition? And although I do not believe in competition, I always do an assessment of other books that are published that are similar to yours. You can see the pricing how well they're selling, what categories are they in, what kind of keywords do they use? And we do a whole analysis to help set you up for success before we actually push that publish button. And as Laura can attest, when you get to this point, you're like, I'm tired. And your work, my friend, is just beginning because now you publish a book and it's very much the opposite of Field of Dreams where you, if you publish it, they will read. You really have to, to get it in front of people. And there are really two key parts to that and one is a launch and one is promotion. And the launch piece is this online launch process. And so we've designed this process that gets your, your network behind you they know about your book. They're excited about your, their, your book. They actually become partners in a launch day. We pick a day, a 24-hour period um, that covers, you know, all these people that you've pulled together who are celebrating your launch. And why do we do that? So 24 hours because, you know, Laura and I are on the East Coast. It's really great. But I know people on pretty much every continent. There are people all across the United States, so we've got a span of all these time zones. And so 24 hours allows us to, to make sure that we can leverage all of them because if you do, and you do it correctly, you can actually become an international best-selling author, not just a best-selling author, which is the goal of every book that gets published, especially the books that we work on. We want everyone to have that, that, um, that acclaim to their name. Okay, so when you launch, you've got your partners, you've got your social media stuff, you've got your email list, you've got your online launch party, and you can do readings and give books away and give other gifts away. Some of your sponsors and people who are collaborating with you might give you things that you can give away, which raises the vibration of the event and gets people all excited and on board with you for that day. And again, your work is just beginning. <laughs> because we want to continue the promotion of your book. And so there are so many different ways that you can promote. There's the regular media, there's getting interviews in print and uh, radio interviews, even television interviews. 
there's um, leveraging podcasts and things like this, getting in front of the chamber organizations and places where other entrepreneurs hang out, where your message can actually hit the people who are meant to receive it. And then they're buying your book and telling other people about your book. And it gets um, sort of this, this crescendo. And if you think about it in terms of um, like Malcolm Gladwell, you know, he talks about the 10,000 hour um, investment in, in learning your craft and in learning what you do. And then there's this tipping point where you get it in front of enough people that, that they're actually telling people that you don't even know and they're telling it to their networks and their friends and you get this, this tipping point where then suddenly there's this avalanche of your book. And it's your first book. And your first book, as Laura said, can often lead to other books because then what you have is you have your latest book is selling what we call your back catalog, which is the books you've written before. So you're leveraging all pieces of your platform, whether you're speaking, whether you're, you have courses, whether you're doing webinars or you're teaching master classes or you're presenting, you can leverage all of these yummy things to actually continually promote your book. And so I really love this graphic because it shows that writing the book, a Herculean effort and celebrating. And, and so I also break it down because it's important to celebrate every single stage of accomplishment because it's a journey to becoming a published author and then letting people know that you're here. And so let's talk for a moment about ways to publish. I'm only going to talk about um, a couple of highlights, or actually a few highlights on this particular page because there are really three main ways that people can publish. Um, and I'll talk about the benefits of each one at a very high level. So most people are familiar with the, what I, I label the traditional publishing. Those are like the big New York uh, publishing houses, like Random House and Penguin, and some of you know so many of the others. You can Scholastic is another one, and so that's one end of the spectrum. And the other end of the spectrum is self-publishing. And self-publishing, although you can get support and have people help you self-publish. Primarily, you're doing it yourself. And, and I think self-publishing is actually a really great way to get your message out into the world, provided you've done some of the things that we talked about on the previous slide. Um, just to put things in context, there are over 2 million books that are self-published annually, and that averages out to about 4,200 books a day. And so making sure that your book if you're self-publishing it it or any of these but in particular self-publishing because you're in control of the whole process 100 percent is you want to make sure that it's the best possible book that you can put out there so that you you don't get lost in the crowd and so when you're doing that launch and promotion piece you actually can get more eyeballs on your books so let's just talk about some of the differences um, between these three. Uh, we, we know self, we know traditional, and hybrid is this middle category. And it's a very broad category. There's everything in the hybrid space from what I call a vanity press, which is really essentially um, a self-publisher um, taking what you already have and just slapping a cover on it and, and creating a little website for your book. I'm not a big fan of vanity publishing. They'll publish anything. There's no criteria or, or um, extra things that go into publishing with a vanity publisher. What I have and what uh, Highlander Press is, is we're what I consider a boutique hybrid publisher. And so the books that come out of my publishing house tend to be on the literary side. And I don't want to scare you off with that word, literary. What I mean by that is that they're well written, they're well crafted, they're, they're books that you will be always proud to have published because they're well, well presented. They give you the leg up on other people. And there's everything in between. I'm actually part of an organization called the Independent Book Publishers Association. And so whether you decide you want to someday work with Highlander Press or you want to you know, go to a different uh, hybrid publisher, there's a whole list of resources on, on their website and, and you know, links to all the different publishers. 
So here are the key differences between these, these two. The first is, um, I think one of the most important is who owns the copyright. With the self-publisher and with the hybrid, most hybrids, you as the author retain the copyright to your work. You actually own the cover, you own all the artwork, you actually own it all. So at some point, if you decide you wanted to republish it somewhere or do a second edition with a, you in a different way, you have that leg up and you have that leeway to do so. With the traditional publisher, what actually happens is you get an agent. The agent sells your book um, on auction based upon the, the publishers who are looking to publish that kind of book in that kind of genre. And then by them purchasing, they actually own the copyright to your work. So they can work with you to change some of it, but they ultimately own it. So if they decide they want to take it out of publication, they want to take it out of circulation, they can do that. That's their choice. Um, so that's one really big difference. Another is the, 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 the royalties that you get. And so with self-publishing, obviously, you're doing all the work. You own all the copyright. You get to keep all the money that comes from your book. With a traditional publisher, it's about an 80-20 split. They keep 80% and you get about 20%. And that, these are rough averages. And it used to mean that when a traditional publisher purchased the copyright to your book, they actually believed enough in the market that existed for your book that they would do the marketing on your behalf. And that really isn't true anymore. What ends up happening is when before they sign you and they take your book, they're going to look at things like um, your social media presence. How active are you? How many, how many people do you have on your email list? How many people um, are following you on your business and personal Facebook pages? How active are you? And how many, what's your organic grassroots market look like? I have a friend who um, has published with, uh, a, a very large publishing house and it was only on her third book that they actually started setting up um, they gave her a PR person and they they gave her um, money to do speaking engagements and, and doing book a book tour the first two books which by the way were bestsellers all over the place were, was entirely because of her marketing expertise and the, the base that she built and how she actually searched out speaking um, opportunities and how she decided to make the most of her book. But it wasn't until her third book that any of that got done for her. So it's not exactly what it used to be. With hybrid, it's usually the other way around. It's uh, you as the author keep 80% and 20% goes to the publisher. And again, these are rough averages. Um, it depends upon the maturity level of the publisher and what the ultimate goals are. And so what does that 20% get you? It gets you some of the back end work. It gets, it covers really the, um, the coaching that you're getting throughout the whole process. It covers a lot, but you are making a financial investment to publish your book. It's not a high, it's not a vanity press necessarily where they're going to publish whatever you want. This is um, a really good hybrid press will actually take what you're doing and, and, and up level it and make it so great that you're going to be so proud. So those are the really big things. There's other things in here about um, that you can spend some time taking a look at. Um, the other one is advances. It used to be that if you signed with the publishing house, they bought the copyright to your book, you would get a nice big fat check. And that again doesn't happen. It never happens in self-publishing and it doesn't happen in hybrid publishing. And it's very rare that it happens in traditional publishing. So um, really take a look at the options available to you and decide what makes the most sense for what you're trying to accomplish and what you want your book to do for you. I mean, those are all really great points, and I love the fact that you really balance the differences and show it very clearly in here. Some of the, one of the questions um, I know that was really important to me, and you touch on this later, in, you know, below in the slide, which is a really big question, um, is the draft to publication time frame. And yeah. I think that a lot of expectations are way 
way over over uh, uh, guesstimated, I should say. So let's, let's share a little uh, bit more about that. So. I'm so glad you asked this question, Laura, because I will tell you that 100% of the authors who I've worked with all want their, if I asked them, they would say they want their book out in a month. A hundred percent. I mean, that is, I, I, it's not an exaggeration. It's a hundred percent. And so there's just really some level setting. And, and I, I like to educate people. It's like, here's where we are. And here's all the stuff that goes into this. We could get, is it physically possible to go from draft to a published book in a month? Sure. That's what self-publishing is for, right? You can create your own cover. You can do all the stuff. You're probably not going to hit all the things that, that, we talked about earlier about the, the right keywords and the categories and the, the, the investigation on how to position your book. A hybrid publisher on average is, I say it's like birthing a baby. <laughs> it takes at least nine months. And that's, um, that's pretty standard. And why? It's because you've got a draft. There's multi Laura came with a great book in really great condition. And I think it took us nine months. Yeah, I think actually it was, yeah, probably close to that. Um, yeah, I remember you wanted to, yeah. well, it may have been seven, but you came in, but we did five revisions. We had how many, how many changes to your cover? Mm -hmm. um, and then there was all the background stuff, the doing the electronic press kit, setting you up to, to be promoted, getting all of the, the uh, graphics correct, getting mm -hmm. the, the launch partners together. So there's a, a whole lot of stuff. Yeah. Um, and when I include the publication time frame, I'm of course including the launch and the promo piece as part as well. But the traditional, and this is really important, traditional publishers is at least two years because they publish, um, they have a, a fall schedule, a winter schedule, and a spring schedule. That's all they ever publish in. And um, they're looking two years ahead because, and, and they pick your day. They pick your book's birthday. You might get some, if you have like, a, if they pick a day that really is emotionally poor for you, they might let you change it, but it will be a very small window that you can change it in because they've got, you know, they've got a much bigger machine. So there's not as much flexibility. Mm -hmm. So um, I think that's, that's actually, thank you so much for, for bringing, for bringing that up. Yeah. And I, and I, I, appreciate the fact that one um and one of the things that you and i went back and forth on originally i came to you wanting to self-publish but once i had had the deeper conversation with you regarding the advantages of going with a more published version um i think one of the things that added to the lead time was the actual layout so let's talk a little bit about that because um sure. layout's really important when you were publishing through a press as Absolutely. opposed to self-publishing and I will tell you it was seeing my book in the properly laid out format it was night and day for me it was really eye-opening to see the actual professional level of having it laid out in the proper format as opposed to just self-publishing and kind of being right <laughs> I know. I'm so again, this is such a great, I, I love that, that, that that's your perspective because I remember sending you that file and being mm -hmm. on the phone with you when you opened it and you mm -hmm. saw it for the first time and I, just, it was very emotional for both of us. Yeah. I cried. I, I cried. Did. I was like, oh, it's real. Yeah. <laughs> and that's a really good point. So when, when people think about self-publishing, the one that they think about most is, is Amazon, of course, because mm -hmm. they have this, this um, KDP um, arm that you can go in and you can publish and they have templates that you can download and you download them into word. And, um, I, I helped probably two dozen authors self publish using those templates. Um, but then when you go into a different format and you're going, you're up leveling and we, you and I in particular, uh, I use, uh, Ingram spark, which is the, the publishing uh, arm that I actually physically publish and distribute through. They require an up level, they require a professional layout and they use, we use InDesign. And uh, I'm with you, Laura, once you see the InDesign layout, it's impossible to go back. I, I don't even, when someone says, I want to do it this way, I'm like, I'm not your, I'm not the right person to publish you then because 
here's why. Here's what this is going to look like. And then it's night and day. It's like being in two different universes. The good news is, is the InDesign file can be converted to a PDF, which can then get uploaded to Amazon if you choose to do that. But it's definitely worth having your, your interior laid out professionally because there's all the things that you don't think about, the front matter, the, the, the numbering sequence, the way it lays on the page, the consistency, you know, you're having call outs, where do they go? How do they look on the page? All of the things that as a self publisher, you might not um, think about. And you can pu pull a book off the shelf and sort of emulate it, but it's not the same. It just, it just isn't the same. And then the second thing where it's really worth the investment is having your cover professionally designed. Sometime, Laura, we're going to have to do a side-by-side -side to show the, the two covers um, because it's night and day. Oh, absolutely. And, and making sure that it's lined up right and the spine and everything else falls in the right places. You're absolutely right. It is night and day. And, and I'm so glad that we went the right direction with it. Um, let's, I want to move on a little bit. So, um, you know, we'll talk a little bit more about Highlander Press and some of the questions that come up frequently for folks um, but Debbie, yeah. yeah so this is I, I, you know I welcome anyone who has any questions if you if something I said today you know brought up questions about a process that you're involved with or that you just would be curious to know um, if your book might be a good fit or if there's something that I can provide uh, of, of value or service to you I just welcome you to, to reach out um, you can contact me at this particular email address and I'll send you a link we'll book a coffee chat and we'll just sit and chat this is not an obligatory thing it's not a sales call it's just let's talk about what your vision is and what you want to accomplish because you know I may not be the right person to support you but I am 100% committed to getting people's books out into the world so that they can do the magical important work that they're meant to do in this world and serve the people who they're meant to serve and I am 100% committed to that. Yes, and I definitely can attest to that. Debbie is an amazing person to work with and she she and it's funny because I shared this with her in I in when I was giving her some feedback was that throughout the whole entire process, working with her, working with her team, getting the feedback, um, working through everything, I felt like I was helped. I felt like somebody really understood what I was struggling with, knew when I was going to push up against something that might be a challenge, met me every step of the way, and guided me with love and care. And I think that's that's so valuable especially when you were putting so much of your heart on the page I mean, you're really putting yourself out there and, and to have someone that will support you through that process whether it's Debbie or someone else it, it's there's so much value in that so you know well I I'm so grateful because um, I, I think there's no greater compliment honestly because it takes so much courage to pour yourself out onto the page and it takes so much courage every step of the way to take a look, you know, at the work that you've done, making sure that it really truly shares what you wanted to share, accepting feedback, accepting sometimes critical feedback, accepting mm -hmm. some pushback, um, but trusting, building that trusting relationship so that you, you, uh, you can relax and trust that the way that you're being led through everything can happen. Um, and, and, and so I appreciate that feedback so much. And um, I, I hope that every person who works with us feels that way because that's the ultimate compliment, right? Is that they want to feel like this is your baby. Mm -hmm. This is your baby. This is you being represented in a very visible way. And I often talked about, and you may remember this, Laura, is like, I, I prepped you. <laughs> I said, when you go the day after we push publish, and we have your launch, I want you to have a day off, at least a day off, and I want you to get a spa treatment or do something mm -hmm. because you will have what I lovingly call as a visibility hangover. Mm. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Thank you for warning me about that. It's, it happens to everyone, um, and it's perfectly normal. And you have that at every step of the way, right? Mm -hmm. There's this gen, like 
I remember with you, Laura, um, and, and you were not alone. So I, I'm just sharing it here. We've talked about it. We were getting closer. The more, the closer we got to the actual launch day, the more, well, we need to fix this. And can we fix that? And I'm like, finally, we had to have the, or the, 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 the come to come to Debbie talk, right? <laughs> like, we can keep changing these things, but we're going to miss our deadline. We're going to miss the launch. And so I'm just going to ask you what, which is more important to you. And at that point, cause I can see it and I see it over and over again. And it's perfectly normal. It's like, there's a fear. It's a mm -hmm. fear of all the things you listed. What if nobody likes it? What if I, what if I didn't do a good job? What if I'm saying nothing new? What if, what if, what if all the what ifs. And so we channel that energy into this is good. Trust me. And that's why I remember you saying to me, good, good has to be good enough, good enough at some point. Exactly. We could yeah. keep, and, and yeah, I, I yeah. So I, I don't want to share all my analogies. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you so much. And, and one of the things that I have to, and, and I have to give you so much credit for, and I thank you again for um, I, the most amazing moment was when I actually got to open the box of books when it arrived on my doorstep. And I thank you so much for encouraging me to video the moment um, because it was, it was big for me. And my husband and my son were here to witness it. And literally pulling, I'm getting all teary eyed here, <laughs> literally pulling my book out of the box and realizing that it was finally in print after all that time. It, it's five years into my business, you know, and I had, that was one of my goals from day one. And taking my book out of the box, not only taking my book out of the box, but how it felt because of the soft touch finish that, the, that is on my book was like, it just blew me away and to literally to see that actually happen and uh, it's just been amazing it's been it's been beautiful it's been an amazing experience I love sharing it with people and I encourage you if you have a book inside of you pour it on the paper find the right person to help you get it published and do it there's there's no greater feeling than when you actually open that book and realize that your dream is right in front of you. Your dream of writing the book has finally come true. And that uh, you are ready to share that with the world and you have the right people to help you do it. So I definitely encourage you to take that leap of faith and to step into the unknown and know that there are people here to support you. And if I can help, if I can answer any of your questions, I am more than happy to do that. I, I love encouraging people and just um, serving the community in my best, as my best self in just sharing you with the world. So you put a book out there, let me know. So I can, I can, number one, I can buy it. Number two, I can let everybody know that you put a book out there. Right. So, yeah. I'm, I'm here to support you as well. And, um, you know, schedule, schedule virtual coffee. Virtual coffee is a great way to connect. Um, we all love to, to do coffee. So, you know, if you have questions and, and uh, you know, Debbie, that's one of the things I'm going to stop sharing this now so that you and I can have um, just some quick talk yeah. because there were some questions yeah. that came up before when we presented this. Right. Um, but I just wanted to touch on. Um, so one of them was the, you know, we, and we did talk a little bit about this, the difference between self-publishing and, right. and actually going through a press house. Um, but I think one of the questions that was really important that came up was the difference between um, self-publishing and the press house and the the ability, the distribution, the points of yes. distribution, the, oh. the level of distribution. Yes. So that, that was, was big for me. I know that was really big for me. So share a little yeah. bit about that. I love that. I love that question. So we talked, to, when we talked about self-publishing, I particularly talked about Amazon and there are other ways to self-publish, but most people tend to go directly to Amazon. And so what happens when you do that is um, you can use their ISBN number, which every book gets one, and you can it can go to the print book, the paperback, and you can also convert it to an ebook, and they have tools that help you do that. But the only place you can get that book is on Amazon. So it's a self-fulfilling prophecy. It's always available on Amazon. They will carry it for forever. But that's it. 
So if you have a vision of, you know, being in the Barnes and Noble, being in your local independent bookstore, having your book in the library, um, you really want to go through a publishing house. With your book, Laura, you, you have, um, it's international uh, distribution, 37,000 different potential distribution sites. So your book is available on barnesandnoble.com. It's available on PALS. It's available on um, book, book, bin, um, book. It's available on all, anywhere. So, and what happens is when you get traction and sales happen, people pay attention to that. And, um, but you could actually, because you've gone through a publishing house, so it's not self-published, you, Laura, can actually go to the Doylestown bookstore and say, um, I'd like to have a book signing. And they could order your books. It's the same as they could order any other book. And they can have a box of books that you don't have to pay for. They buy. And you stand and sign and you do a reading and it's all, you know, great there. You can also buy your own books and get it at what we call a, a it's basically an author publishing price, which you did. It's essentially what it costs to print the books and the shipping, and that's it. So there's you can get a bunch of different ways. Um, so you can take them with you. You can display them behind you, which you so beautifully have done. Um, but the distribution is a huge piece, huge piece. So yeah, thank you for. And we talked a little bit about the different um, the different types of. One of the other questions that came up was, do you have to buy a certain quantity of books or can you have them drop shipped? So that was something else. And I absolutely love the ability to call you up and say, hey, can you send books here or can you send books there? And it's print on demand. So I love that feature of the um, Ingram Press that you use for the actual printing of my book. So talk briefly yeah. a little bit about that. That's a, a great point. So... Um, hybrid presses, again, they run the gamut. Some of them actually do require that you purchase a certain number of books and it's usually minimum is 50 up to a thousand, depending upon the, the, the level. And then they actually print the books and they warehouse them. And then you pay a monthly warehousing fee until the books sell out until people request them. And so that's a very common, um, way that they do it and if your books um aren't selling eventually they're going to call you and you either have to pay to have them shipped to you you've got to buy them yourself or you they they get pulped which means they get destroyed um, and so as a business owner i have a, a commitment to sustainability that's a huge um, part of my core values and so i very strategically made the decision that i was only going to ever do print on demand and so you can print one book on demand or you can print you know a whole box of books or several crates of books but they're printed on demand so they're not going to go to waste they're not going to get um, shredded you don't have to pay a warehousing fee and uh, it's still fairly quick that's great that's great and so if anybody has more questions for Debbie and I we are available to you um, I'll make sure that I put our information um, below or and you can access you know this video at any time um, but feel free you know if you if you have questions don't don't wait that's that's the biggest thing that I can say don't wait the longer you wait the sometimes the harder it's going to be or once you finally do it you go oh man I wish I'd done this sooner <laughs> right. um, people are waiting to hear what you have to say you know even if, even if you just even if your book only changes one life that's the impact it was meant to make. So, you know, don't wait. Don't wait. Well, and, and um, it takes a lot of courage, Laura, and um, and you you leaned in and you were very clear about what you wanted to accomplish. And so um, thank you so much for including me in this presentation of your process because um, I think it was really, it was great to be reminded of all the things that you went to to get to the point where you even knew to ask. And then the magic of networking that pulled us together to begin with. And, uh, and it's just, um, it's been a pleasure. It continues to be a pleasure. So thank now, you. We're, now we're on to book number two, right? I know, we are. <laughs> <laughs> and now this will be your back catalog. <laughs> there you go. Thank you Wonderful. so much. Thanks for joining thank me, you. Debbie. I really appreciate you being here. And um, like I said, anybody has any questions, please feel free to, feel free to ask. Thank you. Thank you.